In this video, I want to talk about the Canon Cine Canonet 8 movie film camera, which uses regular or double eight movie film, which comes on 25 foot rolls and can be purchased from the Film Photography Project store. This camera was introduced in 1963 and was Canon's attempt to make a premium movie film camera that was affordable. Now let's go over some of the camera's features and how to use it. On the side of the camera you will find the battery check meter. If batteries are loaded, you can use the little red button on the bottom of the camera to check their strength. If you press the button and the needle is in the blue, you're good to go. If it's in the red, replace your batteries. Also on the side of the camera you will find your power switch and shutter release button your film speed dial, your film counter, your cable release sockets, and the remote switch socket for the shutter release button. Flipping the camera around, here's your viewfinder. This camera has a 10 to 25 millimeter f1.8 lens. Using the front ring, you can adjust the focus from 4 feet, or about 1.2 meters, to infinity. The black index mark indicates where you're focused. And you can use the rear ring to adjust your zoom from 10 millimeters to 25 millimeters. Right around 13 millimeters is a standard focal length for regular or double eight movie cameras. This little dial at the front of the camera selects between automatic and manual exposure mode. Pull it out to put it in manual mode and you can adjust the aperture by turning the knob. In the viewfinder you will see the aperture needle moving. Push the dial in and the camera will automatically adjust the aperture based on the film speed selected. Here the camera is set to automatic exposure mode and you can see the needle moving as the lighting changes. I have it set at 40 ISO and its range is from about 1.8 to 4 uh, in these lighting conditions. And you can see that if I bump up the ISO, the needle's range of travel reflects the change in sensitivity. Next, I want to go over some more of the features on the side of the camera. Right here, you'll find this dial that says 24, 16, and 12. This is your frame rate. Um, normally, you want to keep this on 16. This is the normal frame rate for 8mm film. Here you have your film counter. It tells you how many feet of film you have left after you've loaded the camera. All right, let's load some batteries into this camera. By the way, you can adjust the viewfinder to match your eyesight by turning this dial under the battery cover. The camera takes three AA batteries to power the motor, which will get you through about 10 25 foot rolls of film, according to the manual. Okay, we'll put the cover back on the battery compartment and then we'll take a look under the film door. And I just want to point out the level of detail on this little camera. They actually put a little rubber bumper for the film door to rest against when it's open. To open the film door, just rotate this little dial from close to open. And look at that, the door opens right up. You should see a couple of things when you open the film door. There should be a take-up spool that came with your camera. If there are no spools in your camera, I know that the Film Photography Project store has take-up spools if you need one. The other thing that you should see is a little metal cylinder that houses the battery that powers your light meter when the camera is set to auto exposure mode. Often you will find that someone has left the original mercury battery in this compartment and you know it'll have corroded and leaked and it's just a mess. Mine was like this, 
It was a real pain to remove the cover at first, but I was able to do it and I cleaned it out and everything still works, fortunately. So if you want to use the automatic exposure mode on this camera, you're going to need probably need a new battery for it. Um, this is the battery you need. It has about 10 different names. LR50, A1PX, among others. Um, the original battery was 1.3 volts. This one is 1.5. I don't think it matters. It's pretty close. There really aren't any other options anyway. Um, this works fine and I highly recommend using the automatic exposure mode. Uh, your videos are going to turn out great. Now I'm going to demonstrate loading the camera with this roll of film that came in the camera. It's a roll of Kodachrome. Uh, it's no good, so it's just going to be my demonstration film or test film. You will probably have noticed that this metal arm is in the way of the spool. Uh, it's the mechanism that counts the amount of feet left on the spool and you'll have to move it out of the way. You just press down on it, move it out of the way and let it spring back up and it'll stay there. Now take your fresh 25 foot spool of regular 8 or double 8 movie film and the important thing is that you want this light colored or uh, the not glossy side, it's the, the side with the texture to face toward the lens or the front of the camera. And just run your film around that first metal post and then up to the pressure plate, which you don't actually have to move out of the way like I did there. You can just slide it in and it'll kind of click into place. And then leave about eight inches, eight to 10 inches sticking out the bottom so you can spool it onto your take up spool. And make sure you go in the direction that the arrow uh, indicates or when you uh, activate the shutter it will just unwind what you just did, so you don't want that. And just insert the film into the little slot in the spool and give it a few winds, uh, wind it tightly, take up the slack and slide it down onto the post. And you know, you'll just feel it. It'll pop down on there and it'll be even with the other one. And at this point, what you want to do is uh, make sure the camera's on and just run the shutter about a second. You don't have to do it this long and uh, just to make sure everything's working properly. Then you shut the door and you're ready to go film. And I forgot to mention it, but you can do this in dim light. You don't have to be in total darkness. You just don't want to do this out in some bright sunlight because the spools are designed to keep out most most ambient light if it's not too too bright you'll be fine now once your film counter reaches full or empty or done or whatever it says we're actually going to take your film out and flip it and expose the other half this camera is done when the white marker suddenly jumps over to f it's done at that point Okay, so now we're going to go back to our dim light and open up our camera and move the film counter arm out of the way. And then we're going to swap the spools. Um, your take-up spool that came with your camera is going to remain with your camera. Make sure that you do this. If you have not done this, you've only half exposed your film and you're going to get back a very short video, only half as long as it should have been. And you just want to do the same steps that you did before. Run the film through the pressure plate, leave about 8 or 10 inches, wind it up on the take-up spool, test it, close it, and shoot the other half. You can send your film off to be developed and scanned at uh, the Film Photography Project or 
Pro 8 millimeter, and I'm sure there are more that do it. Um, I know these two places will give you back HD scans um, or Ultra HD scans if you want those. I have some film photography projects, Cine 8 uh, 100D, which is Ektachrome 100D, that they've respooled onto 8mm spools. Uh, I have that on order. When I get that in, after it's been processed and scanned, I'll do a review and make a video about that. And uh, if you like this video, if it's helped you, please consider buying me a coffee. I'll put a link in the description. And I'll put a link in the description to uh, the Film Photography Project. And, you know, get yourself one of these cameras, um, any 8mm camera, and start shooting film. Film is forever. Film can always be scanned to the next latest and greatest digital format, whatever that is. Um, nothing wrong with digital. This video was filmed on an Olympus OMD EM5 Mark III. Uh, so I need digital. We need digital in our lives, but shoot some movie film. Keep movie film alive. And uh, that's all I hope for. Uh, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, and uh, see you in my next video.